Hello everyone, it's Journey with Theater Technicians YouTube channel. This is my brand new series, Let's Ask, where I bring aviation professionals into my platform and give you guys a peek into their career, um, discuss on what they do and how they do it. Today we have an avionics engineer from a part 145 maintenance organization who's also an EASA licensed engineer. So without further ado, let's get to the introduction. So I think I've talked enough. Um, so I'll present the stage to uh, our guest. Uh, could you give us a brief introduction to yourself? So my name is Omar Salim. I am an EASA Part 66 um, Aircraft Maintenance License holder. Um, until recently, I was working um, as a senior avionics technician at a Part 145 organization in, in Europe. So Omar, one of the frequent questions I get is what does a B2 engineer do on a daily basis and what are their responsibilities? Could you explain a bit about this? Uh, a B2 avionics certifying staff or avionics engineer um, is responsible for um, certifying maintenance tasks that are carried out um, on airplanes, on avionics and electrical systems, uh, meaning anything that's related to um, what's called the EWIS, the Electrical Wiring Interconnection System, um, or related to avionic systems. You know, anything that is electronic that is on an airplane is classified as um, avionics. So the, yeah, the, B, the B2 certifying staff would certify that um, whatever tasks have been carried out either by themselves or by their support technicians um, have been carried out in accordance with um, the relevant documentation in line with um, EASA Part 66 um, regulations and Part 145 as well. So my next question is, what are the academic qualifications required to become an avionics engineer? Well, the main qualifications that you need to actually be issued a license um, are your core modules. So these are subjects um, that you have to pass at an appropriately approved organization, um, which you will then couple with practical experience to be um, to then apply um, to get a license, a Part 66 license. Um, you would have to do um, 10 core modules, and then according to, uh, well, in this case for B2, then you would have to do a couple of extra B2 specific modules. So you start off with doing um, mathematics, physics, electrical fundamentals, um, electronic fundamentals, digital techniques, materials and hardware, maintenance practices, aerodynamics, um, human, sorry, human factors, air legislation. Um, and then that's the first, th those are the core 10. Um, and then you'd have to do other um, avionic specific stuff like we said, so you'll do uh, Aircraft Systems, Module 13, which is um, for avionics. It's centered on avionic and like navigation equipment, communication equipment, um, stuff like that. Then you'll do a Propulsions module, which focuses on um, FADIC, you know, full authority digital engine control systems and stuff like that. So this is like, so this you can, you can say this is an academic um, requirement for, for getting the license. It also helps if um, you've you, you've already completed a uh, you know an undergraduate degree in aeronautical engineering. It would make um, you know passing these modules far easier than if you've had zero um, prior knowledge. Um, you know, especially when it comes to mathematics and physics and aerodynamics and stuff like that. So another important question is: What are the most crucial skills? required to become an avionics engineer. Uh, could you explain about the soft skills that are required and also hard skills? So, um, let's start off with the, the hard skills. So first of all, you need to be 
good with your hands. And what I mean by that is you need to be able to um, actually perform um, the work that is needed. Um, so you need to be skilled in that regard. You know, you need to be comfortable um, using tools, using multimeters, using um, wrenches, spanners, um, test equipment. And you need to, yes, sort of develop that motor skill, which, you know, you, you acquire over time, you know, by actually performing the work. Um, it's not for everyone, you know, not everyone likes um, sort of hands-on work, but uh, that's definitely, uh, I would s almost say a non-negotiable skill that you would need to develop before um, being given a license. So the soft skills, I would say, um, definitely, you know, communication, being, being a good communicator is non-negotiable as well. You'll be working in shifts, you will need to be able to communicate um, what you've done. You know, some tasks can be very long, they could take up to two or three shifts um, to complete, like an FDR data readout, when you're reading out all the parameters of uh, that go into the flight data recorder, this task in, on some aircraft can take up to, you know, three full shifts to complete. Um, so if you need to hand over to someone, um, you need to be able to communicate effectively at what point you stopped, what needs to be done, you know, what has been completed, etc., etc. So communication is essential. Um, you need to be a team player, obviously, because like I just said, it's a team effort, you know, a single B2 engineer is not going to be able to finish the entire aircraft by, by him or herself, at least not, you know, in a realistic time frame. Um, <clears throat> so yes, you need to be able to work in a team. You need to adapt to changing working conditions as well. You know, you could be having a normal day where <clears throat> the workflow is pretty okay and manageable, and then you get a spike in, uh, in workload. And you need to be able to formulate a plan um, to deal with this, this spike and not lose track of things and maintain an acceptable level of, uh, of safety. So I, th I would say these are the most essential um, soft skills to have. Could you please walk us through a day in the life of an avionics engineer? Okay, so I would arrive in the morning. Um, or in the, the evening, depending on the shift. And I'd meet up with the team leader who would um, then give me a short briefing on the tasks that we will be, will be performed today um, and the tasks that have the most priority. Um, so then I would be given a, a task card or I'd be given a bunch of task cards um, which have to be completed within a set time frame. And uh, yeah, so depending on what the task is, then I would um, print out the relevant documentation, the um, recent aircraft maintenance manual relevant to the task, and, uh, and then carry them out, carry out the work in accordance with the um, approved data. And uh, yes, and then you would have to, once you've actually completed the work, um, you fully inspected it and you're happy with it, um, then it, you'd have to uh, finalize paperwork for what you've done. So then you would, um, it's called closing task card, uh, which means you would have to, there would be, you know, appropriate um, channels to, to, to do this through. Um, but you would write something like, okay, um, you know, proximity sensor electronic unit um, removed and new units installed satisfactorily in accordance with AMM chapter, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, No discrepancies noted. Then you would write, you would have had to do a functional test after that. So functional test carried out satisfactorily in accordance with AMM, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, then you'd close off the task card. That's one complete task done. And you would go on until you uh, get through the tasks for the day. So as you might be aware, there are a lot of youngsters who are wanting to step into a career as a avionics or a mechanical engineer. What is the best bit of advice you can give to them as an avionics engineer for someone who's looking to step in as an avionics engineer? 
and start their career? So the best bit of advice I can give anyone looking to get into this career is to um, be patient and uh, sort of make sure you're fully committed, um, you know, before going down that path, because um, things can get frustrating, they can get slow at times, you know, um, you might not exactly always get what you want. Um, so eventually you will get there, you will get your license, you will get your type ratings, and you will become a, a B2. But you have to put the effort in, you have to get your exams done, it's the most important thing, and get the experience done, and get your license, and get rated, get rated on the aircraft, and, and do it. But it takes patience. So go into it expecting a less than ideal um, path. Um, be realistic and you'll get there. So. so any other questions or concerns that you would like to add um, apart from the questions I've asked, please feel free to do so. So I think that being a B2 um, licensed engineer is a very um, fulfilling job, um, you know, especially if you find aviation interesting. Um, to begin with, which I think is important when you're doing this job, because you really like, need to like it, because uh, it can be demanding. Um, so yes, it's a very fulfilling career, in my opinion, um, especially when you have like a project that you work on for, let's say, three to four months, you're having a heavy sea check, and then you see the plane, um, you know, take off for a check flight. Um, that's a very, very satisfying feeling. And it's uh, something that I would recommend for anyone who is, mm -hmm. I can describe as, you know, techni a technical person or technical oriented person who also happens to, um, you know, be interested in aviation. So thank you very much, Omar, for participating in this uh, short interview. And I'm very sure this video will benefit anyone who's looking to step into an avionics career. Thank you very much. So everyone, this is it from me and from Omar and thanks a lot for joining and for more videos like this, please share, subscribe and like my videos. Don't forget to press that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post a video. And if you need more aviation professionals like this on this platform, please don't forget to drop them down in the comment section so I can talk to them and get them on this platform to tell you what you require to be one of them with another video. We'll meet up next week. Until then, keep fixing.